Big Rhino Productions, in affiliation with Pablo the Mexican Productions, presents the live stream catechism. It should start in about 15 minutes. Please stay tuned. Catechism, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy divine love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Ghost. Truly really wise, and never do rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Sorrowful in a magna heart of Mary, pray, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for us. Saint Angela, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> so here at the seminary of Our Lady Mount Carmel, we continue our catechism series. Um, now we're in the middle of the Ten Commandments. The Commandments We've already seen the first three, which pertain to God directly. Now we're looking at four through ten that deal with the love of our neighbor. The love of God and the love of our neighbor are the summary of all the law and the prophets. So the fifth commandment, precisely then, what is it? Thou shalt not kill. Killing, which is forbidden by this commandment, means taking the life of a human being unjustly. Animals, what about killing animals? Animals may be killed for man's reasonable need or convenience. Hunting, fishing, and using animals for scientific purposes. To kill or injure animals without this commandment. What are we commanded by the fifth? To take proper care of our own spiritual so the fifth commandment commands, take care of the spiritual life. This is primary. It's like a walking cadaver. It's grace, and we need to do that with God's help only. The reading, this is all part of taking care of one's spiritual life. the needy, take care of the poor, but, but, but despise not thy own flesh. So the, the body also has a place in um, this commandment, obviously. So that it does not have its own life. It's very important because God is, we must fit into God's order because everything has proper or the life of another unjustly, unjustly. We'll come to that. Man does not have supreme dominion over his own life. He was not the cause of its beginning, nor may he be the deliberate cause of its end, to end one's life. Man must use the ordinary means to preserve life. He is not, however, obliged to use extraordinary means, which would involve relatively great expense or intolerable pain or shame. So he's talking about in the case of extraordinary means to preserve life. So, um, but even even today, such as for example, intravenous IVs, intravenous feeding, intravenous medicines, which used to be maybe in the 50s and 60s, extraordinary means, now they're not. They're very ordinary means. So Catholics and all people are obliged to, to provide for a dying person 
all the necessary means, especially feeding them by medicines and by uh, the, the feeding by the tube. Man is obliged to use prudent means in order to preserve his health and the health of those under his care. So, what does the fifth commandment forbid? The fifth, com fifth commandment forbids this long list. Here it is. Murder, obviously including abortion, which is a direct crime. And we have now even many uh, priests in the, in, since Vatican II, even bishops, who have weakened and softened on this point of abortion. And now some of them even say it's a woman's right. And that, that's against the fifth commandment. Murder, suicide, fighting, anger, hatred, revenge, drunkenness, bad example, or scandal. So let's look uh, closely at a couple of these. The life of another person may lawfully be taken. So when is murder permitted? It's never allowed except under certain circumstances. Let's see what the church teaches. First, in order to protect one's own life, self-defense. Someone's breaking into your house with a rifle and you have your wife and children at home. You may use a gun to protect your family and yourself. That is permitted by common sense, by the natural law. So, um, also, in order to protect one's life or that of a neighbor, or a serious amount of possessions from an unjust aggressor, provided no other means of protection is effective. So self-defense and uh, defending a neighbor as well. So if a Muslim comes up to a, a, a person and threatens their life in the store, you have every right to defend them. And if the Muslim pulls out a gun on them to shoot them, you can shoot the Muslim to protect that person. So that's called uh, defense, self-defense, from an unjust aggressor. Secondly, uh, by a soldier fighting in a just war. A soldier fighting in a just war, he's commanded by his generals, got to shoot the enemy, he may do so in a just war. Uh, the question of war, that's a real sticky one with the modern wars and modern means of war, but the basic guidelines are um, it must be just, it must not be excessive in war and kill more than necessary, such as innocent civilians. Third, by a duly appointed executioner of the state, when he meets out a just an interesting question because we see since Vatican II many Catholic bishops and but let's look what the Catholic Church has always taught in her tradition. Firstly, based on the that takes precedence over the part. His example is this, green and infected, the doctors are going to do what? They're going to empty it because it's going to move up the arm into the heart and kill the whole person. Punishment for the good of the whole of society, the state has the right. says that the, the arm of justice of the state may meet out punishment. Speaks about capital punishment. When he says drowned in the sea by the lawful state after a serious crime after a fair trial, let him be drowned, our Lord says, to the bottom of the sea. after a fair trial, and they, can, they know the hand that is dangerous to the whole must be heretics, but we've lost all this now. Heresy is the word beliefs, and the uh, child 
all fit in being worthy of capital punishment. In person after a fair trial may be condemned to death. Some of these things from, I take this from Iota Unum, Romano Amerio, which was a book praised by Archbishop Lefebvre. Among natural things, precisely because life is the highest good. What's the highest good among the relative goods of this world? And it is by consent. So St. Thomas and, and uh, Professor Amerio is defending that because it, get rid, it gets rid of a threat to society. How would you like to live in a neighborhood? It's down the street and the police do nothing about it. Children, you're going to let them run around at night? Of course not. Thomas Aquinas, it's good for the criminal himself. Again, the expiation was itself affected through his being for the innocent. But a he may offer his death and even save his soul direct before God. Remember too the conversions of condemned St. Joseph Kafasa, who was the to the execution. They were hanged. Resistance, that was a, a resistance in France at the time. The judge and the executioner, the death penalty. Some famous conversions. Assisted to the scaffold by the Queen of Spain in 1852. And uh, a, a Right at the scaffold by St. Catherine of Siena herself. She would, she would accompany many of the to the spiritual perfection of one of God's elect. And then St. Thomas says these always. Here's what he says from the Summa of Theology, St. Thomas. those crimes in the next life, or at least part of that punishment. According to the quantities of guilt, so, uh, so St. Thomas says capital punishment saves society. Great story of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. At nine years old, she prayed for this criminal who was going to be executed. Our Lord, Chaplain, Father, give me that crucifix. And he made his confession at the scaffold. But it, it has, just think, just think, if I was a criminal, think twice about it. crime rate goes way down. <laughs> and now a lot of people's taxes are going at least after 15 years and they go, many of them go back to their crimes. And September 14th, 1952, listen to this. Even when it is a question of some It is then the task of public an expiation of his fault after he has already deprived himself both he teaches what the church has always taught death that is very serious 
and threatens the common good of the people, such a Pius XII. Of course, the modernists can't stop the clear teaching of the church. So, capital punishment, uh, in spite of all the liberals and faith, can see this. And, and, one, and one even has capital punishment. I mean, they were pagans, so. So, uh, which is undertaken by public wage a just war under the following four conditions. First, so if, you, if, a, if a country is attacked, you may soldiers, that is the men. It is absolute perversity. Every soldier knows it's a joke. All the men know it's wrong. But the of them, they're not made for this kind of combat. They're not built for it. So it's, it's part of that liberal stupidity. And it's a total joke. And any sane man knows this. So it's, it's not a resort after all other means have failed. Third, if it is conducted justly in accordance with natural and international law, break all these rules of a just war. What about the direct intention to kill? So this goes for the retarded people. And uh, the state, many states who were pagan and atheist, such as the communists, put to death these people, use them for scientific experiment. And that's if a patient asks for a shot to kill them, you cannot do it. It's absolutely immoral, assisted suicide. In order to relieve him from offered for soul, offered in reparation for your sins. An, an unborn child has the same right. So if a, if a mother is giving birth to a baby, it's not going smoothly. The church says, in natural law, and God's law says, you cannot commit. You have to try to sustain the life of both. And if God takes one of them, kill the life of the mother and kill the child. And that's not right. It's completely immoral. An unborn child cannot be killed to save a mother. E, the human body may be sinful. Is it sinful to risk one's life without us allowed to do that? To risk one's life in order to save the life of another person, however, someone's drowned. You don't know how to swim and you're going to drown, but you help save that person. That's a, a clave another. And Christ himself teaches that. He who lays down is permissible and in certain cases obligatory to, to risk your life. So a parish priest is bound to risk his life to bring the sad disease. And it's eating all of all his skin. What about uh, cases like um, suicide to overthrow all this? But the church always did this because people will see, well, I better not commit suicide. I'm not going to have Catholic burial. Fortitude. Everybody has their hard times. Everybody has their low points. And the devil, seek you will find. Knock and will be open to you. We have a father, the heavenly mother also, the Virgin Mary. She's our mother in heaven. So we have all this good people on earth, whether it be family, priests, no. but it's a lack of moral fortitude. And that's why it's important, uh, you know. So we shouldn't make life over soft for him. God alone sets that hour. And none of us are allowed to say, well, I'm going to take my life. Who allows many times the valleys, he also creates the mountains. He who makes rainy life. Uh, suicide is also an injustice against society. The whole family suffers. The brothers and sisters he works for, they needed his work. And their society, his workplace, he deprives them of that. It's an, it's an, and uh, Venerable and Catherine Bentley, as well as his soul, are in hell. Who committed suicide? It's an offense against God suicide. It's never love. Participate 
and they promote a duel. The church punishes with excommunication not only those who engage in a unjust anger, revenge, fighting, and other grave sins. So a slight anger can be venial sin, but death in their heart is a mortal sin because they injure the health of a person and often lead to other sins. Drink. He deliberately deprives himself of the use of reason without a just cause. He provide for his family, spending all the money for his wife and children. Uh, as of drinking, he violates a grave obligation arising from the law of God, the church, or the state. Drunk driving while intoxicated because such a person puts me on uh, Highway 71 between Louisville and Cincinnati here in Kentucky. Children, the bus was torqued. They couldn't get out. The children, uh, most of them, burnt to death. So, um, quotes from the sacred scripture, our Lord mentions this, um, worse than murder in some cases. The, the St. Paul's, which are enmities, contentions, anger, quote, concerning these I warn you, as I have warned you before, that they, and, and St. John, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. So, what are we commanded by the fifth commandment? A decent Take care of the good of our neighbor. And who's our neighbor? Christ said, anyone who, so the corporal, drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, give a place of hospitality. Higher ones are the spiritual works of mercy, remember that. To counsel the doubtful. They can have catechisms, they can hear the sermons of the Catholic faith and the, about the crisis of the faith we're in now. So these are all great works of mercy, to pray for the living and the dead. This is the fifth commandment. Next class will be the sixth commandment. Come on, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, crusher of all heresies, pray for us.